of the rough times that I've look in when I arrived in London, I, got, I was beaten up a lot too. The National Front, who were um, the people that worshipped Hitler. Oh Jesus! Um, yeah, they they were notorious. They used to have shaved heads and those metal bother boots they'd wear, and they'd kick the hell out of you. I remember the first gig, I, the record company took me along to my first gig. It was to see, you know, because I thought I was a punk. Of course, I wasn't a punk because I was too nice to be a punk. But anyway, I wanted to be a punk. So I, one of the first gigs I went to um, was to see a band called The Lurkers, who were a, a notorious punk band in London. And uh, they were playing just near where I lived in uh, Ladbroke Grove in uh, in London, just off Portobello Road. And um, it was, they were nearly all National Front people at this at this concert the lurkers were playing and then i looked up on stage and they the national front guys they stormed the stage they went running towards the stage they picked up a microphone stand and hit the singer with a microphone stand they all stormed the stage his head split open blood spurred all over the place i thought fucking hell i have to get out of here i felt like i was the only non-national front person but i was with the record company boss so we and all, all, the, all the exits were blocked by the National Front, so you couldn't get out. So I thought, well, we're gonna, I said to Nick, Nick Austin, who was the head of uh, Beggar's Banquet Records, and I said, we're going we're gonna to get beaten up, but let's just run. <laughs> I, ran, I ran down Portobello Road and I hid in a, um, a telephone box, one of those you know, Doctor Who telephone boxes, and my hand went up. I was living with the, he- with the people from uh, the heads of Virgin International, Virgin Records, Laurie Dunn. And my hand went up and I dialed the phone so that nobody could see me in the road. And I said, come and pick me up, man. I'm going to be killed. So they came and picked me up in my phone box. Unfortunately, the head of the Beggar's Banquet Record Company, he didn't make it out. Oh, bugger. He got he got really, really Plummet. badly beaten up. Yeah. And I uh, later on that night, I went and visited, <laughs> visited him in hospital. Oh. I felt guilty because I got away. I was on Spicks and Specs last night. And they were talking about me being banned on the Ray Martin show for um, for uh, a costume malfunction. You were banned <laughs> on the Ray Ma- Martin show? Yeah, because I was – I used to do the midday show all the time when I first came back from London. And I was um, – they, they'd call me, the producer, and say, Would you, could you come on and sing this song, come and sing, you know, What's Going On, Marvin Gaye, or come and sing this or that. And I'd say, sure, sure. And they asked me to go on and sing Fever, the Peggy Lee song. Never knew how much I missed you. That song. And uh, I said, yeah. So I went along. I had my band, a, a great band, and um, I thought I'd surprise them because I'd be doing the show dressed pretty normally. I thought I'd go on and I'd, um, I'd wear a leotard, thigh-length boots, lots of makeup, bouffant my hair out, false eyelashes. And I went on and um, I didn't tell anybody what I was wearing. We, we did a camera check with the, with the Channel 9 crew and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, Ray Martin said, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Duff, fever. And I walked out and I was in this leotard, you know, with thigh-length boots. But I had been in the dressing room with my girlfriend at the time, Tawny, and um, I'd got exci- she'd got me excited, so I had a little bit of an erection. So uh, I couldn't get rid of it. And <laughs> Ray Martin had introduced me on stage. And I walked out and I thought, Fuck, what am I going to do with my my penis. Um, so I had to go on. So all of a sudden, the, the, they'd done a camera check with me looking normal. All of a sudden, the cameras had to had to shoot from above the waist because I was sort of half falling out of the leotard. So, so, <laughs> so I got banned. So they were doing the uh, Elvis thing where Elvis, where they wouldn't show Elvis's feet. They were doing that. Yeah, yeah. But his was from for, for yeah, dancing, wasn't yeah, it? Dancing, wasn't it suggestive yeah. dancing yeah, suggestive and stuff? Dancing, yeah. yeah. Mine was for exposure and malfunction. See, they like to do camera checks and they like to know exactly what's going on. Mm. And uh, I caught them by surprise because all of a sudden, you know, I was probably dressed like this, similar to this, in the camera check. And then all of a sudden I come out looking like um, Danny LaRue or one of those drag artists. Mm. If you shine one side of the ball, then it swings okay. uh, either left or right. Okay. Um, and late, late in, the, in the game, you know, they get out swing or in swing. And the ball does all sorts of things. That's why from continent to continent regarding cricket uh, and the weather, the balls swing differently in every continent, especially uh, in the southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere and also in Asia, you know, with the um, Asian cricket continents. 
But, you know, all, all the cricketers, they know, they do their homework. They know what works best. Worse than that, they used to, you know, they chew gum. Sometimes yeah. they put gum in the, in the, the seam of the ball yeah, right. to make it go lopsided, you know. <laughs> There's all sorts of tricks. Wow. Most of the Pakistani cricket team were, um, were guilty of doing all those dirty tricks. I mean, I suppose they weren't dirty tricks because most, most teams knew about it. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until Sandpaper Gate with, with yeah. um with uh, Warner. Oh, that was Steve Smith and yeah, uh, Warner, Warner yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't until that was exposed that people have zoomed in yeah. <laughs> to watch what, what they're doing with, with the ball between overs. Mm. I was a fan of cricket in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, and I reckon that was the best period of Australian cricket. Yeah. Personally, I think. Then it's Lily and. Yeah, I mean, it. it was exciting, wasn't it? I mean, you had yeah. you had the characters, you had the start of the World Series cricket period, um, and that was exciting, wasn't it, when that came on uh, around that yeah, time? Yeah, and it seemed to be far more competitive between the nations as well. Yeah. You know, they're really out. And there was, I mean, there was a lot of dirty, dirty pool going on too, you know, but I mean, it was, uh, it had a, a real spirit, you mm. know, and. It was dog eat dog. Uh, it's become a bit sanitised, I think. You know, you're not allowed to abuse your opponents anymore. You're not allowed to – there's none of that um, chat on, on the wicket, you know, to, th- to try and throw your opponent off their game. You know, even in my, my grade of cricket, we, we can get thrown off the field for, uh, for abusing or, or for chatting to an uh, to uh, opposition player. So, um, so you can't you can't uh, go. Oh, you know he's nervous. He's nervous. He's going to go out next ball. You can't do all that sort of stuff. You can't do that anymore. No. Well, you know what they do with, because they know I'm a, a bit of a rock star in Sydney. When I go out there, they start singing, "Let's dance." <laughs> <laughs> Must have cast a spell. 